Now, but no, what is from a player standpoint? Do you have a, a particular favorite move? Best move? I think the I think the trading I think the trading for Gilmore. I'll, I'll say this though. No, I'll, I'll let me go back on this one. I think the I like the move because I didn't think they were going to get Donovan Wilson done. Okay, mm. I didn't think they were going to get that one done because that was coming out of the combine. It seemed like that they were really far apart. And Adam Pacifica, those guys did a great job of pulling that thing together and get it done. I didn't think they had a chance on that one. Uh, I will go with the Gilmore trade since Cooks, you, you went with Cooks there, Gavin. I, I think getting Gilmore is going to be awesome now because you were desperate for a cornerback too, and it allows Deron Bland to then kick inside and play the slot, which he did so well. And for negotiating purposes with Trayvon Diggs, teams are going to throw at Trayvon Diggs now. You're going to find out just how good he is. Mm. There were some games where he's not tested because everybody's picking on Anthony Brown. They're picking on Mullins or you know whoever the heck the Cowboys had over there at cornerback two. Teams aren't going to be able to do that anymore with Stephon Gilmore over there. You're going to have to respect him. So I think that we're going to find out You know Trayvon Diggs is in a big contract year. This is this is going to be an even more of a prove it type season for him. The worst move from kind of just getting information together. I'm I'm nervous about Solari and the offensive line. You kind of scared me to death about this now, Brian. I think that any time you change the offensive line coach, when you've had some success with the young guys that they've had, I mean, you know, talk about you know talk about with Steele, what Smith. I mean, they they've, they've gotten better. the center got better. You know, now you're gonna you're gonna switch that all up. Mike Solari hadn't been coached at all last year, yeah, right? You had some options out there yeah. of offensive line coaches if you just wanted to move on from Philbin, but you bring in a guy who's a buddy. I wish they could have got running game Moses. Bill Callahan? Bill Callahan. Oh yes. That would have been awesome. Was yeah. he was he out no, I, available? I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't even I, know what I, he's he's I, with I, the I might, Browns. Still? I might yeah, I, I might know. trade a, a draft pick for running game Moses yeah. as an offensive line coach. Man, I've never heard him called that, but yeah. I dig that. And uh with Passover week right now, well Chuck, that feels very apropos. Thank you very much. Uh I do agree with you guys. I mean, they made some they made they've made some outstanding moves. I mean, and and one of them uh, you know, being willing to cut ties with Zeke, I think was a must have. Like <laughs> I know it's not an acquisition, and I know it's like it's it feels like a little bit of a net neutral because you're not bringing anything in with that move in and of itself. But that that was a must situation between the Gilmore and the Cooks thing. I think ultimately most people would come down to one of those two moves. I think I would go with the Cooks as the best one, just simply because the way they pulled it off, they have Houston paying a good chunk of his salary, and I keep going back to that night in San Francisco. And your biggest problem was scoring points and a lack of weaponry, and maybe that is a knee jerk what have you done for me lately that's the last thing we saw and that was the last problem we saw them have because a few weeks prior it was certainly the secondary and the defense getting carved up at times so uh, I understand the Gilmore but I would probably go with Cooks because I just feel like this team was desperate for playmakers and uh, and that's a guy that's going to go a long way into helping yeah. you there. Yeah, but the the Zeke anchor was huge, and if they'd have decided to come back and give him the ball another 175 times next year, that could have been a disaster. I think you definitely saw in the 49ers game, he just was not a threat. And when your pass game isn't working, if you have really no chance to make first downs with your running game as much as they want to emphasize it. That could have been a critical blow be to the season before it even got started. Ooh, good text. Two and four, bringing back Hankins is a big-time move. Uh, that that really is was very important. Worst move, actually, take away Solari. It's Tag and Pollard. Tag and Pollard, yeah. That would that would be me as well. I mean, the, the Solari thing might turn out to be a disaster, and that's the bummer of the – the Kellen, the 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 Kellen Moore for Schottenheimer, uh, and the Philbin for Solari. I think we were all cool with Kellen Moore and Philbin getting out of here, but who they replace them with does not seem like the. It's not something that we're all fired up about, and maybe we'll be wrong. I mentioned this yesterday. Maybe there's a career renaissance and look in the mirror and a, a willingness to adapt to what you've always done with Brian Schottenheimer the same way it was with Dan Quinn. When he can't when they when they brought Dan Quinn because yeah. I think you and I saw similarly about Dan Quinn at that time like dang here we go back to the to one trick pony better have really really great didn't interview defenders. anybody yeah just like all right here you go you got the job but Dan Quinn changed up his game maybe Schottenheimer will do the same uh, the idea of Terrence Steele going from right tackle to being a swing tackle or a move to left guard are you guys buying? That like that they're actually serious about that, no. or is no. that just BS? No, I think that's everything that Jerry Jones. It's against everything Jerry Jones believes about how his inside three guys should play. I love. I mean, I, I I love the fact that Terrence Steele has gotten better, 
but you saw what Connor Williams under power, the way the way he lacked power. You could say the same thing about Steele. Steele is a great athlete, you know, getting better and getting better with his strength, but not to the point where the Ron Learys and the guys like that that you've seen him have success inside with bigger bodied guys, stronger guys. I think that I think it's 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 everything that he doesn't believe in. I'm really going with what my guy Michael Gelkin said that you know in order to get Tyron Smith to take so much guaranteed money off the table, you had to give him an incentive deal, and in order for that to sound good, you had to tell him you're going to get every chance to start at right tackle. And as the season goes on, if he's struggling at it or Terrence Steele is struggling, once everybody is healthy and we're a month into the season and Tyron Smith is no longer healthy, you'll see this thing settle in. But I, I think it's like when the when the Bears drafted Justin Fields and they kept saying that uh, that uh, that the Red Rifle there was their starting quarterback Andy Dalton. It clearly wasn't. But that's the promise that they make to agents and players mm-hmm. to get them to do deals. And Andy Dalton's like, well, I could I could get more money here or there, but they're telling me I could be a starter. Tyron Smith's like, I really don't want to take a pay cut, but if you give me an incentive laden deal and tell me I get the chance to start, now it sounds good. So I think that's the massaging of of roster building and relationships with agents. And for now, it's going to be a temporary annoyance that they won't just call it what it is. Or, or, or that Tyron Smith, they finally said, "Listen, bro, you can't stay healthy. We need some money. We've 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 been with you when you've played. Yeah, like you I'm know, all we, for. We, we've always honored your contract. We've never asked you to take a pay cut, but you got to give us something back for being loyal. All these let them compete for right tackle. But even if you say Tyron's the guy, it's not going to be long until Steele gets out there. I don't think Steele has the ability to kick inside and play guard. It doesn't look to to me that doesn't no. that doesn't match what he does well. We talked about Darnell Wright, the tackle out of Tennessee. He is a good right tackle. I disagree with Bobby. I do think he has athletic enough. He was able to handle Will Anderson, B.J. Ojolari, two of the better edge rushers in this year's draft when you watch 1v1 on tape. I think Darnell Wright could end up being their right tackle if they drafted him at some point, but he does have the ability and skill set to kick inside and play left guard as a rookie. I think Terrence Steele is going to be a right tackle week one. Okay, uh, now we'll, we'll start with that Darnell Washington kind of deal. Whoever your number one offensive lineman, I think I know where Dawson would go here, but you're at 26 comes up, your number one offensive lineman is there and available, and your number one tight end is there and available. Where are you going? Number one tight end? Well, are you saying, okay, like for my your no- top offensive lineman my top or offensive, tight end? Or your top tight end. They're both oh, available. Okay, okay, you're, okay. Whatever your favorite tight end in the class is, and whatever your favorite lineman is in the class, well, see, okay. Where are you gonna go? Like your okay, like Skaronsky is he, is that what he's asking? Right. Like I think yeah. Do, do you have Skaronsky as your number one overall yeah, offensive, offensive lineman? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, same. So I would take Skaronsky over Dalton Kincaid. I would take uh, Skaronsky over a uh, mayor. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is there is there any lineman other than Skaronsky that you guys would take over your personal favorite tight end at twenty six? I would take Paris Johnson, the tackle out of Ohio State, who I th- who I think is the best tackle. I take um, Jones from Georgia, Broderick Jones. Yep, from Georgia, and I, I would as well. And I think I would take man. I got Wright and Mayor right there with each. Yeah, other. Wright is where it gets interesting. But honestly, for this team, I think I'd slide. With, I, I think I'd go with Wright. I mean, we've seen the benefit of having a really damn good offensive line, yeah. and where that's and, and I think that you're going to be able to find a tight end that can give you a similar style of play if you decided I'm not going to go there in the first round. I'm going to take my lineman. ESPN's Matt Miller did some player comps for some of the top players in the draft. Uh, Rockwall's own Jackson Smith and Jigba, who's the number one wide receiver in the draft, according to many people, certainly one or two. Uh, and they have C.D. Lamb being the comp to Jackson Smith and Jigba. Is that something that you guys would co-sign? I don't think yeah, I mean he's he's got a little bit of C D Lamb in his games. I think he's he's a bit of better route runner than C D was yep. coming out. Might have better hands. Yeah. Yeah, he does. C D had you know, C D didn't show the drops yeah. at Oklahoma, but Jackson Smith and Jigba catches everything. Yep. For me, my comp. Did you have a comp for him? Like an NFL comp when you watch Jackson Smith and Jigba? No. I think he's a little bit difficult to I do too. To I, I think he's a very unique player. They have Bijan Robinson's comp being Saquon Barkley. I know you've given me uh, Barry Sanders oh, I think vibes. He, I, I think he's got. I think he's got some of that to his game. I think I he's do. better than Barkley. I do too. And Barkley was the fourth overall pick. I think he's a better prospect. Yeah. 
uh, Notre Dame's tight end Michael Mayer, who many like Broadus have as the number one tight end in the draft. Uh, Walchuk, I believe you have him as the second best. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have TJ Hawkinson. This is going to be wild, but to me, Hawkinson he, might be a better athlete than what Mayer is. I'd go, and I don't. I'm not saying he's going to have this career. Okay, this is one of the best tight ends to ever play. But Gronk is the comp for him. For, Damn for Mayer, yes. Okay. And that's not even Wolchuk's favorite tight end in the draft. That's the way he plays. Big dude, doesn't look overly fast, finds a way to cover ground, has great hands, huge physical presence. He's great in the red zone. I mean, the same thing that Gronk was. Gronk was a great red zone yeah, player. Yeah, boxes people out. Yeah. All right, there's four NFL teams eligible for hard knocks this year. Who do you want to see? Jets, Bears, Saints, Commanders. Oh, the Jets. Jets, for sure. Especially if Rodgers happens. I want to see what a train wreck the Commanders really are. (laughs) With the off-season of ownership switch, that could be pretty entertaining. I want to see if it really is a train wreck. Because I give them a lot of credit for some of the players they have. I would be interested to know about a division opponent that way. Kind of get into, like, what are they thinking right now about their their team? I like to see them just from a a standpoint of wanting to learn a little bit more about them. I like the Commanders. I think that's fair uh, with it being an NFC East team. You assume Rodgers is going to be a Jet, so that is, you know, and it's that would New be York. I mean, that would be pretty fun. Yeah. Saints would be, I think, really boring. I, think I agree. Be, the I Saints would be a very boring team to watch. No interest in that one. The Bears could be fun just because of all the influx of talent, the Justin yeah. Fields stuff. I mean, that, that could be fun. But Jets and Commanders, and maybe not most fan bases would say commanders, but being an NFC East team, I think that would be pretty fun. And with the ownership stuff going on, it, it could be like train wreck material, which would be outstanding. Yeah. And speaking of train wrecks, just a little PSA out there. It looks like Starbucks is uh, is doing olive oil coffee. What? And it's, it's causing some uh, stomach issues. And, yeah. and one person quoted uh, called it a legit laxative. Okay. okay. So yeah. if Adding, you need to clean the pipes, maybe roll through Starbucks and get that olive oil yeah, absolutely. coffee. I don't know. I don't understand how this is all work. Like if you just make coffee and then squirt a bunch of olive oil in it. We're doing weird stuff. A, that's a weird olive deal. Olive oil yeah. or mayonnaise? It which would, one are you thinking right? about? Olive yeah. oil for sure. Over we got mayonnaise. mayonnaise going into coffee yeah, these I mean, days too. The yeah, olive oil a, yeah. makes sense because for soda, they want us to have two uh, teaspoons a day. Uh, avocado oil. Of uh, Avocado or olive oil. Huh. And MC. CT oil is fire. Oh, right. Yeah, that's Boy, it will flush you out too, yeah. bro. Yeah. It will squeeze on the inside. I've never <laughs> done it with the MCT before. And Me too. Yeah. I was riding porcelain oh for an entire MCT? Saturday. What's bro. that? It, M- MCT. It's like a coconut oil. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got it for, for the brain. For, for benefits of like the brain and stuff like that. It's good for digestion. And I just grabbed a scoop of it and, and put it in. I was like, oh, this kind of tastes good too. And then I woke up in the middle of the night. Yep, Ramps, sure will. With the most yep. bubble gut situation <laughs> yep. I've ever experienced. I thought I had food poisoning yep. until I Googled it and realized what had happened. You'd be wiping so much back there. You just want a Kotex. Like, I need a Dude. Kotex back here. I'm going to sit on. Jeez. I needed to drag my mattress into the bathroom and just stay there the rest of the night. <laughs> yeah, dude. It'll put you down. Be careful of the star. Starbucks olive oil coffee. I would just uh, mm. a good old fashioned stay away game for me.